Welcome back to Lipid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous two videos, we saw phases one and two of cholesterol synthesis, which was, first of all, generation of mevalonate, phase one, generation of our basic isoprenes, IPP and DMAP, which is phase two, and then ultimately creation of squalene by isoprene condensation, that's phase three. And then I introduced a little bit of what's technically phase four, and that's how we get squalene converted to squalene 2,3-epoxide by squalene monooxygenase, and then a cyclase enzyme, fully named 2,3-epoxy-squalene cyclase, catalyzes the conversion of this into linosterol. And linosterol was really the first molecule in this pathway that really, really resembles cholesterol, just from the sense that it has all four of the rings. We have these three six-membered rings, our five-membered rings, and this tail. Now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the conversion of linosterol into the mature cholesterol. And what we're going to see is there's actually several important differences between linosterol and cholesterol that we're going to have to rectify. So first of all, let's, let's see if we can come up with some of them. Let's look at the tail first. If you were to compare linosterol to cholesterol, you notice there's a double bond right here. So that double bond's going to have to go. It's going to have to be reduced into an alkane. There's a few methyl groups here that are not present in cholesterol. For example, this methyl group sticking down is not present in cholesterol. That's going to have to be removed. And these two methyl groups below the A ring, uh, these are going to have to be removed somehow. These other ones at the top, these are fine but the other two will have to be removed. And then also this double bond right here is in the wrong place. In cholesterol, the double bond is actually on the opposite side of the B ring right here. So we're somehow going to have to make those modifications to get cholesterol. That's what we're going to look at in this video. So let me kind of explain uh, what this is here. Um, the first real phase of this pathway is to generate a molecule called zymosterol. Okay, that's actually shown right here. We need to generate zymosterol. Um, I'm going to show you these uh, reactions first. These reactions are to remove the extraneous methyl groups. Okay, so in this first reaction, we can convert linosterol to 4-desmethyl linosterol. The des in front of a functional group means it's removed, so 14-desmethyl linosterol. That's going to remove the methyl group right here at position 14. Notice it's gone here. The way this reaction occurs, it's, it's an oxidative decarboxylation. I believe it's a P450 enzyme that does this, and you're going to remove that carboxyl as formate or formic acid. Then we're going to have another set of decarboxylations where both of these uh, methyl groups below the A ring are going to be removed. Um, again, it's catalyzed by a P450 type of enzyme, and it's going to remove both of them as actually carbon dioxide this time, but you're going to end up with this molecule called zymosterol, or zymosterol, which is shown over here. All right, so now we've generated zymosterol. Um, and you see this pathway looks pretty complicated, but I'm going to simplify it as much as possible. Pretty much all the enzymes are the same. The only thing that differs in this pathway is when you actually reduce this double bond on the tail. The double bond on this tail is reduced by an enzyme uh, called 24 reductase. That's a simple name, 24 reductase. And 24 reductase can really act on any of these molecules, any of them. In fact, 24 reductase can actually act on linosterol. If you notice, if we actually did the reduction of the double bond before we actually did these decarboxylations, we'd actually have zymostenol. Because notice, we can actually reduce the double bond here and then perform all the decarboxylations, and now that double bond is gone with the same decarboxylations. So that double bond reduction on the, on the tail can be done at any point in this pathway. But let's consider if we do the oxidative decarboxylations and then do the 24 reduction, so reduce this double bond. That 24 reduction is going to convert zymosterol to zymostenol. Okay? Again, the 24 double bond here is actually gone. Now, the next enzyme, what it's going to do is it's going to perform an isomerization. So it's going to take this double bond right here and just move it down here, just a kind of a rotation of that double bond, essentially. That's going to give us levosterol. Okay, it's in a simple isomerase. Then we're going to have this enzyme, which is called levosterol oxidase. Levosterol oxidase is going to add in a double bond right here, right here. So you're going to have two double bonds conjugated, and we see that here. 
This molecule is called 7-dehydrocholesterol. Now, for the most part, this is considered to be the, the direct precursor to cholesterol. Okay, this is the direct precursor. Not only that, 7-dehydrocholesterol can also be siphoned off and be shunted into vitamin D synthesis because actually vitamin D's precursor is 7-dehydrocholesterol. So that can either go one of two ways, either to vitamin D or down here to cholesterol. And the enzyme that actually converts 7-dehydrocholesterol to cholesterol is 7-dehydrocholesterol reductase, which is actually going to specifically target this vertical double bond right here and reduce it into an alkane as shown in cholesterol. And that's going to give us mature cholesterol. And this pathway that I took of converting linosterol to zymosterol and then reducing this tail double bond by 24 reductase to give us a zymostenol and going down, that's if I reduce that double bond early in the pathway. But notice what I can also do is take zymosterol and do all of those same reactions. I can isomerize the double bond add in the double bond, reduce that double bond, and then I can reduce the tail, or I can reduce the tail at any point in this pathway because that 24 reductase does not care which substrate it acts on. You could actually do it first on linosterol, then do the oxidative decarboxylations and get zymostenol, and then do all of these. The key here is really just you have to perform these three oxidative decarboxylations, one in the first reaction, two in the second, and then you have to isomerize this double bond to levosterol, add in the double bond here to make 7-dehydrocholesterol, and then reduce this double bond to make cholesterol. But the point is, is you can reduce that tail double bond at any point in this pathway. But if you actually want to get 7-dehydrocholesterol, then presumably that re tail reduction would have to occur earlier in the pathway because either you have to proceed down this way from levosterol to 7-dehydrocholesterol or from 7-dehydrodesmosterol into 7-dehydrocholesterol. If you get desmosterol, you cannot get 7-dehydrocholesterol. Okay? You can only get cholesterol. So very important. Um, that this gives us two important products. Again, the 7-dehydrocholesterol will be used in vitamin D synthesis or calcitriol synthesis, same thing. And then the cholesterol, as we know, has a variety of functions. We're going to talk about several of them. Um, notice that cholesterol can be used to make bile acids. We have some videos on that that I'll include in this playlist. They're used, cholesterol is used to make steroids like testosterone, estradiol, cortisol, aldosterone, etc., but it also has a lot of other important functions such as the stabilization of membranes over a wide range in temperatures. So it's used in plasma membranes. So cholesterol is very important. So hopefully this video, although it's a little bit confusing, gave you a little bit of intuition on the conversion of linosterol into cholesterol with the um, added bonus of seeing that 7-dehydrocholesterol. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to talk about the regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis, at least part of it. Um, there's some other things that we'll talk about, such as the steroid response element binding protein, in a second video. So this will be the first one. Um, but we'll talk mainly about the regulation of HMG-CoA reductase. All right, so please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.